Hi everyone, this is Manshi Dhawan, a UPSC CSE aspirant, just like you all. And today I will be sharing the magical mantra to the most practical subject of UPSC CSE. Yes, you guessed that right, ethics. So I stumbled upon this book. It's called the Theoretical Framework, and it's curated by Eden IS. Today I will be bringing forth its advantages, disadvantages, and answering the most awaited question: whether you should buy this book or not. So without any further ado, let's get started. Firstly, we have the table of contents. The table of contents have been neatly divided into seven units. The first unit talks about ethics and human interface. Then we have attitude, aptitude, emotional intelligence, ethics in puppet, governance, and last but not the least, case studies. The table of contents have been comprehensively compiled. In addition to that, you can also use the table of contents as a tracker. So I am somebody who likes to strike off the topics when I am done with them, and the table of contents here come as an asset tracker. So that's an added bonus. Now I would like to share some of the sections of this book which give it an upper edge over other traditional sources that we have been using for ethics so far. Uh, there is this topic. It's called the categorical imperative. So for all those who don't know what is categorical imperative, it was a theory which was founded by Immanuel Kant. uh back in the 18th century now uh, this topic has been barely touched by any of the traditional sources however this book describes this topic in great detail it reads according to kant morality must be based on categorical imperative this categorical imperative is a central philosophical concept in the deontological moral philosophy it has three different formulations Kant claims that all three do in fact say the same thing but it is currently disputed whether this is true. The second formulation is the easiest to understand but the first one is most clearly a categorical imperative and then it lists the all uh, three formulations. Now the sources I've been referring to so far they simply try the level best to baffle you. However here it has been lucidly given that the first formulation is a true epitome of categorical imperative and the second one is easy to understand. So I don't think you can find um an explanation which is as lucid as this. In addition to that if you wish to know more about Immanuel Kant then I would refer to you 70 thinkers and thoughts. I love the title of the book. It is very fascinating. I'm reading it currently. I'll be reviewing it on this very channel. So stay tuned. if you wish to see the book review of that book moving on uh, now there is this topic which you can find in almost every second book it is the difference between skill aptitude attitude and interest so um these three key differences skill and aptitude interest and aptitude and attitude and aptitude have been covered in a very elaborated manner in almost all the books but i haven't come across an elaborated version until i read it here so uh, they have given the three differences in a very lucid manner and that too on the same page so for a person like me who doesn't like to indulge much in note making i love the idea of putting all the three key differences on the very same page you don't end up flipping the pages and getting frustrated just land on page number 73 you spot the three differences and there it goes there it goes So this was one thing now I would like to move on to one of the most integral parts of ethics yet the most disliked sections you guess that right case studies so case studies comprise of 120 marks that is almost 50% of the ethics paper because of their application based strategy it is very difficult to tackle a case study it is very difficult to score a case study until unless you practice a lot and your concepts of ethics are pretty strong Now uh, the seventh unit of this book deals with case studies. I was pretty disappointed when I saw that only eight case studies have been given here. In other traditional sources, you can see ten to fifteen, at max twenty five case studies because case studies is very tactical. Uh, you don't get to understand the topic in one go. Uh, however, when I went through the solutions, I realized why they have restricted the number of case studies to. So uh let me uh, read the first question for you the first question here talks about um a person who is a chief medical officer so basically you are in the shoes of the cmo the chief medical officer right now um the scenarios of covid 19 and um, 
your district the district you are posted in has been categorized as a red zone so you have been advised that the people who are not abiding the law who are not uh, prescribing uh, sorry the, those who are not uh, following the norms of social distancing they have to be evicted from the state now this stands out to be a dereliction of your duty because you cannot evict a certain sect of population from a district so this is the question and the questions being asked here are under such circumstances highlight the possible options that are available to you the second part of the question reads what course of action would you follow under the given circumstances so uh, these two questions are there uh, 250 word and answer is required 20 marks i love the way they have actually summarized the entire answer so uh, roy sir who actually teaches ethics at eden is he um, explicitly says that there are multiple ways to approach a case study however one of the easiest and the best ways is to follow the 10 step generic approach if you don't know what is the 10 step generic approach um, there will be a link in the description box you can visit that link and you can go through the entire um, case study writing process it will be of great help to you it has helped me i hope it will help you as well uh, coming back to the answer here so um, there is a table given here which talks about subject matter facts values and stakeholders so subject matter is nothing you simply read the question and you come um you've restricted it to a job you given it a topic so here the topic is health emergency and speedy eviction which clearly summarizes what the entire case study is about moving on we have facts so many people actually mistake facts as something which you've already read or you know a uh, true ethic uh, concepts but that's you're highly mistaken if you think that facts are basically statements which are actually given in the question so here the question clearly states that the virus has actually um you know virus is uh, in its blooming phase so it clearly reads the virus has reached its community transfer phase social distancing norms have been flouted state government has ordered for a speedy eviction allegation of targeting a section of population so basically the key things which are given in the question is simply jot down in facts values um uh, the next column of the table results in the underlying values of the interests of the stakeholders so most of the aspirants get confused between interests and values if you are a stakeholder this uh, ie if you are a concerned person in this particular situation you will be having an interest this interest has underlying values so here they talk about values whenever we are saying there is a conflict of interest there is a conflict or a clash between the underlying values of that interest and then it talks about the stakeholders the concerned people in the situation so i really loved how they have dealt with the entire case study in such a lucid and tabulated manner so it is very easy for the uh, examiner as well to mark you because he or she will be able to make out that yes you know what to do and you know the track so i really loved how they have uh, elaborated the seven case studies and now i realize why they restricted the number to seven uh summing up uh moving on to the advantages of this book so firstly uh we all know that for a subject as practical as ethics you cannot get a comprehensive book you cannot get a complete book however when it comes to this book this book is apt for rudimentary level i strongly recommend this book because this book gives you an insight into the subject and it will help you in strengthening your concepts of ethics which will ultimately benefit you in fetching a good score in gs4 uh the length of this book is 217 pages to be honest when i got to know that this book has 217 pages i was like oh yes ethics is doable now so 217 makes ethics a doable uh feat for me i hope uh it makes ethics a doable feat for you as well uh when it comes to cost this book cost 430 rupees i feel that it is pretty reasonable given uh, the impact it leaves on the reader given uh, the effect it has giving a uh, the changing perspective you get after reading this book so i think it's pretty worth it indian eyes also provides an alternative to that they have a very crisp compiled 15 page i guess that's a 15 page uh, snippet it's called the glossary of ethics so you can go through that if you find this book tough and then you can move on to the theoretical field So this was actually my approach. I first read the glossary snippet, and then I moved on to the actual theory. So it has worked for me. I am able to understand ethics, and I am able to 
pull up a good 150 in the ethics mock test I've given recently. So I personally recommend this book to you. I would rate it 4.5 on 5. Now it's up to you. The ball is in your court. Uh, all the best for your preparation. That's all from my side. I hope this has helped you out. I wish you all the luck.